Supersets are the single most underutilized training technique, but I'm not talking about supersetting two exercises for the same muscle group. Let me explain. Welcome back to Wolf Coaching, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here, and today we're talking about supersets. This topic was actually recommended by a few of you in the comment section, so thank you for asking, but not the same muscle group supersets, but rather something called non-overlapping supersets. That's a term I stole from Dr. Mike Isretel. To give a quick cliff on why I'm not referring to same muscle group supersets, for example, doing pushdowns and push-ups for your triceps, and but rather about supersets with different muscle groups, it's because, broadly speaking, the evidence doesn't really support the usage of same muscle group supersets beyond just doing traditional straight sets. In contrast to same muscle group supersets, we do have a growing body of evidence supporting the use of non-overlapping supersets. But before we delve into that science, let me explain what non-overlapping supersets really are. Strictly speaking, non-overlapping supersets is supersetting any two exercises with some rest between those two sets or not that target different muscle groups. For example, using the squat and the bench press would classify as being a non-overlapping superset. Using a squat and a leg extension would not classify because you're using the quadriceps in both of these exercises. So non-overlapping supersets are simply supersets consisting of two exercises targeting different muscle groups. However, we can break down non-overlapping supersets further. Specifically, one subtype of non-overlapping superset is the antagonistic paired superset. In the antagonistic or antagonist paired superset, you're supersetting two exercises that are essentially opposites in terms of the motion you're performing and in terms of the muscle groups involved. The reason why antagonist paired supersets may be particularly beneficial is because whenever you're doing any motion, let's say a bench press, the antagonist muscle groups, like the back and the biceps, which are resisting the motion that you're doing while benching, those are always activated to a certain extent for stabilization and other things. This is called reciprocal inhibition, wherein the antagonist muscle group kind of resists the pecs and the triceps in this case. And so, in the antagonist paired superset, what we think might happen is by first training the back, it will then interfere less so during the bench press because it's more fatigued and has just been trained. And so with antagonist paired supersets, you could potentially expect a greater performance enhancement compared to not doing any superset at all because the antagonist muscle group is fatigued and may interfere less with performance, for example, of the bench press when you just did a set of rows, aka antagonistic motions. But enough about the theory behind paired supersets and non-overlapping supersets and antagonistic paired supersets. What we really care about is whether or not there's any evidence supporting their use within your hypertrophy training. Broadly speaking, we have six studies. These can be classified into either being acute, where we just have people perform either traditional sets, you know, one set of bench followed by some rest, another set of bench followed by some rest, and then we move on to, for example, rows versus doing paired supersets and seeing how that influences performance, for example. So these are acute studies where participants just come in for one session and we look at the effects of paired supersets on performance. And the other classification of study could be chronic studies, where we actually have participants either do traditional sets, you know, doing your three sets of bench and then moving on to rows versus doing a set of bench, a set of rows, a set of bench, a set of rows and going back and forth and seeing how well the two groups respond to this and whether one group grows more muscle than the other. So in total, we have six studies looking at the effects of non-overlapping supersets on either acute performance or chronic adaptations like hypertrophy. Specifically, we have four acute studies looking at performance and how non-overlapping supersets may influence performance acutely, and two studies comparing traditional sets just doing the sets of one movement, one after the other, before moving on to another movement, versus non-overlapping supersets and measuring hypertrophy before and after in two groups, each one employing either traditional sets or non-overlapping supersets. Let me start with the acute studies and let me tell you first why we would care. Basically, when you're training, what you're trying to do really is to impart a muscle group with a stimulus. Now, depending on how much you train, what you do during that session, and how well you perform, that can all alter how much stimulus you give to the target muscle to grow. And so, presumably, if we can get you to perform better in your session, that will then eventually lead to more hypertrophy. There are some assumptions built into that, which is why you don't take acute studies and just apply them and think, oh, if there's an acute effect in a given session on performance, that means we definitely see more growth. But it is good to see those effects as a sort of mechanistic link as to why these techniques might hurt hypertrophy or might benefit hypertrophy. The acute data on antagonist paired supersets or non-overlapping supersets 
started emerging around the mid 2010s. The first study tried to see whether doing an all out set of leg curls before doing leg extensions would enhance performance in those leg extensions. As I mentioned earlier, by training the hamstrings first, they might interfere with performance of the leg extension less by resisting the quadriceps less during leg extensions. This study had six conditions. In the first condition, participants just came into the lab and did their 10 rep max or as much weight as they could lift for 10 reps on the leg extension. In the second condition, they performed a set of leg curls to failure immediately before their set of leg extensions. In the third condition, they rested for 30 seconds between their set of leg curls to failure and their testing set on the leg extensions. In the fourth condition, they rested for a full minute between leg curls and leg extensions. In the fifth condition, they rested for three minutes between their set of leg curls and leg extensions. And finally, in the final condition, they rested for a full five minutes between doing their set of leg curls and doing their set of leg extensions. And here are the results. When performing a set of leg curls before their leg extensions, generally, they were able to do more reps with the same weight. In other words, their performance improved. Importantly, the greatest performance improvement was seen when doing their leg extensions immediately after their leg curls or 30 to 60 seconds afterwards. So if you wanna see a performance benefit, this might be a rough ballpark to shoot for. The second study had participants superset bench pressing and rowing while resting two minutes between each set of bench press and bench press and 45 seconds between a set of bench press and rows, compared to a condition where participants simply took two minutes between sets of bench press. The non-overlapping superset group actually saw greater volume across the whole session, meaning they were able to lift either more weight and or for more repetitions across the session. So supersetting antagonist motions, like a row and a bench, seemed to actually enhance performance across the session, although greater fatigue was noted by the authors in this study. The third study on acute performance actually was the first study to not look at antagonist paired superset, but rather at non-overlapping supersets. Specifically, they supersetted squats and bench press. In one condition, participants simply rested for three minutes between sets of squats and three minutes between sets of bench press. In the superset condition, on the other hand, they rested for three minutes between any given set of squats, but 45 seconds after performing a set of squats, they performed a set of bench press. In this study, they measured performance using both the velocity of the first rep on any given set, the total number of repetitions performed for each set with the same load, and finally, how many repetitions were performed across the whole session. In short, when supersetting squats with bench press, no major differences were found in terms of the velocity on the first rep of any set, how many repetitions were performed across the whole session, or even how many repetitions were performed on each set. This study begins to suggest that actually, it doesn't need to be an antagonistic paired superset, it can just be a non-overlapping superset, and you still won't see a detriment at least to your performance. The final acute study was quite interesting, because in this case, they looked at the effect of different rest times between sets on how well you performed. They also looked at different supersets. Specifically, they looked at both the bench press and row superset, and the pull down and overhead press superset. Rest times were either one minute between sets, two minutes between sets of the same exercise, three minutes, or self-selected rest. The authors assessed performance using total training volume across the whole session. In other words, how much weight were the participants able to lift for how many reps across all their sets when they were doing supersets as opposed to resting for sufficient time between each set. In other words, in this study, the authors tried to determine how long should people rest between sets during a, an antagonistic paired superset or during a non-overlapping superset. The greatest training volumes were generally achieved with three minutes of rest between sets for the same exercise or with self-selected rest. Although similarly great volumes were also seen closer to two minutes. So there may be a trade-off between two and three minutes of rest where with two minutes, you see less performance, but you are spending less time training. In other words, by supersetting two different exercises and essentially training during the rest time for one exercise, you're able to do more sets in less time. That should lead to greater time efficiency within your sessions. And with three minutes, you see greater performance, but your session winds up taking more time. It's difficult to say whether that trade-off is worth making, but I would generally tend towards three minutes for bigger compound movements. Importantly, the superset of overhead press and pull downs didn't seem to do quite as well for performance compared to bench press and row. In other words, supersetting overhead press and pull downs may be a bit more challenging in terms of maximizing performance. So broadly speaking, the acute data suggests that one, when pairing antagonist exercises, you may actually see an improvement in your performance. Two, you can also superset non-overlapping exercises, like for example, the squat on the bench. They're not antagonistic, but at least they don't train the same muscle group, and you may not see a reduction in your training performance. Three, certain exercises may be safer to superset 
without losing performance. For example, the pull down and overhead press may be worse candidates for this technique compared to say the bench press and the row, or a curl and a tricep extension, or a leg extension and a leg curl. Finally, what's worth noting for acute performance studies is that generally the participants weren't super trained. Now, let's move on to the chronic studies. The studies actually looking at hypertrophy and strength outcomes. The first study used a similar design as a previously mentioned acute study, supersetting the squat and the bench press, resting three minutes between sets of squats, but 45 seconds between a set of squats and the first set of bench press. One group trained exclusively using traditional sets, so doing all their sets of squats, then moving on to bench press, and one group did the superset technique I just mentioned. Performance was assessed using counter movement jump, one rep maxes, and muscle endurance measurements. In short, similar improvements were seen in counter movement jump height, one rep maxes in the squat and bench, muscle endurance in the bench press, but there were greater gains in muscle endurance in the squat when doing supersets. This is likely owing to the fact that they simply perform more work in less time and thus had more of a muscle endurance adaptation effect. The second study on non-overlapping supersets actually measured hypertrophy. So to recap the acute studies, there was not really ever a negative effect of supersets on performance. And thus, if performance is the thing impacting stimulus from a session and stimulus is the thing impacting hypertrophy from a session, you wouldn't expect to see any differences in hypertrophy when supersetting versus doing traditional sets, or potentially, if doing antagonistic paired supersets, you may actually expect to see greater hypertrophy because that might enhance performance, thus enhance stimulus, and thus enhance hypertrophy when performed over the course of a program. In this study, participants performed three sets of leg extensions and leg curls twice a week, either by supersetting those two exercises or by doing traditional sets. There are always two minutes between sets of a given exercise. For example, in the traditional set group, there would be a set of leg curls, two minutes rest, then another set of leg curls. Whereas in the superset group, it was the same thing, except this time they were doing leg extensions in between the set of leg curls. They measured strength using one rep max on the leg extension and leg curl exercise and hypertrophy using muscle thicknesses of the quadriceps and of the hamstrings. Increases in one rep max and in muscle thickness were similar for both groups. In other words, this first study to look at hypertrophy directly when doing supersets seems to suggest that supersetting two exercises that are non-overlapping, and in this case also antagonistic, a leg extension or a leg curl, didn't seem to impede hypertrophy or strength adaptations at all. Those are all the studies on non-overlapping supersets. Let me give you some practical takeaways on how to implement this in your training to save time and potentially see more hypertrophy and strength adaptations. For hypertrophy, don't be afraid of supersetting exercises, especially if they're antagonist paired exercises. As a rule of thumb, if you try supersetting two exercises and you find that performance doesn't suffer or even improves a little bit, those are two good exercises to superset. As an example, the bench press and the row work very well as supersets. Generally, rest between one and three minutes between sets for different exercises. For example, do a set of bench, rest one to three minutes, or until you feel ready to go for a set of rows, and go for your set of rows. Then, rest one to three minutes, and go for a set of bench, and repeat this process until all your sets are done. You don't need to just stick to antagonist paired supersets. In other words, you could superset something like a dumbbell ladder raise and a calf raise. Because these two exercises use very different muscle groups, you can superset them and likely see no detriment to your performance. And in fact, by allowing for more rest between sets of calf raise, you know, if you're just doing calves, you might find yourself rushing through the rest time because you're bored. You can actually have a longer rest time between sets of calves and potentially see more growth, as some data suggests, better hypertrophy when resting above two or three minutes between sets. If you notice that supersetting two exercises consistently leads to worse performance, it may be worth not supersetting those two exercises. As an example, I know I mentioned a study where they supersetted squats and, squats and bench. While you could superset those two exercises, I generally wouldn't recommend it, simply because if you're doing a set of squats, that can be very systemically fatiguing. Generally, just being fatigued could feasibly interfere with performance, especially in more trained athletes. Finally, I wouldn't recommend necessarily using non-overlapping supersets on very high rep sets. It can be quite challenging going from one exercise performed for high reps to another one performed for high reps. For example, if you're just done doing 25 reps on the bench press, moving into 25 reps on the pull down can be quite challenging because you're still out of breath overall and not really ready to perform maximally on that set of pull downs. Equally, generally with high rep work, that lends itself better to isolation work and you'll find that you don't need as much rest between sets. So you don't gain much time efficiency by supersetting those exercises because you already wouldn't be resting for that long typically anyways. So with high rep work, that's potentially a detriment to training performance 
and you also don't gain that much in terms of time efficiency owing to the short rest periods typically employed with high rep work. That's the video. If you liked the video, please comment, like, subscribe. This one was actually quite researched and it was suggested by you. So if you want to see more videos in this style, please comment down below letting me know what you want to see. Peace.